822, time for the Water Boys as we take a look at Okanagan Sun football. I don't know if we should be calling Jay Christensen this morning. Maybe we should be talking to Ryan Huska, where the uh, Kelowna Rockets have been riding a three-game losing streak. Uh, that might uh, sort of take the pressure off of uh, Jay Christensen, offensive coach uh, for the Okanagan Sun. Uh, Jay, good morning. I'll come to you in a second. Uh, Kamal Abagus was in the stands on Sunday as the Vancouver Island Raiders were welcomed to the bowl by the Okanagan Sun. He was there with his posse. He was uh, strutting up and down. He was waiting. Waving his hands vigorously in the air most times, clearly he was critiquing what was going on on the field and was telling everybody else who would listen about it. Kamal Abagush, good morning. Good morning, Phil. <laughs> Kamal, it was a. It, it, we'll go to Coach Christensen in a second, but but Kamal, it was a tough. It was a tough grandstand to sit in on Sunday. Well, you know, it must have been tougher for Jay to be standing on the sidelines. I mean, it was hard on us, but. I couldn't imagine what was going through Jay's mind. <laughs> Jay, would you would you like to take us there, or is it in words that you can repeat here on the radio? No, oh, absolutely. You know, I think really what happened is, uh, you know, going into the week of preparation, um, you know, obviously a lot was built up about the game, and I think Coach Casey did a, a pretty good job getting these guys to believe that, you know, 14 points is a, is a doable uh, amount to overcome. And, you know, we get into a game and unfortunately have a, you know, have a turnover Really, on our first play from scrimmage, they score, and now it's 21 points. And I think that just, uh, you know, kind of bit the psyche a little bit of our players, and and you know, didn't play as you know, obviously as well as a whole group as I think that we certainly could. Um, I made comments to to some of the coaches. The funny thing is, if you watch the game film, the offensive game film, I don't uh, obviously don't pay attention as much to the rest of it, but the offensive game film, you would have thought we won the game if you didn't know the outcome. Seriously, it, 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 on your side, you're you're quite happy with how the offensive. Oh line no, 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 no! <laughs> I'm not. I'm not happy with the way they play. But I'm just saying, if you watch the film, we did a lot of good things in that game. I think if you consider that in the fourth quarter, we were throwing the ball to put some points up. They were running the ball to kill the clock, and we basically finished dead even in yards. We outrushed them up until that point. Um, Come out. Yeah. I think I think Jay should take his rose colored glasses off, you know. <laughs> I mean, I got to tell you, uh some of those passes that uh JJ was throwing up, uh I, I have no idea where he was looking. Uh like to me it looked like a total breakdown. Uh offensively 3 points, defensively 35 points. I think the the whole team just absolutely fell apart. They choked bigger than you could ever imagine and you know what i was uh just after the halftime i was walking past part of the grandstands and john Gwidlin, who's a very big paper boy says are you quitting and i says no they've already quit okay. you know uh, so it's it's like i think jay's right these guys uh we're down 21 points after two minutes, and they just absolutely shut down. And that's a coaching problem. Jay, I want to I want to toss one more at you uh, sure. because anybody that I was standing next to didn't understand. Everything seemed to be built on the long bomb, the hail mary pass. What about the short quickies? Uh, it, the, that just didn't seem to be a part of what was going on till late in the game. Well, I mean, with most pass patterns, you have, you know, both options built into it. And, and you know, there's no doubt we made some uh, poor choices more often than not. Um, and that's why I say, you know, watching the film, I'm, I'm certainly encouraged uh, for if we happen to, uh, to get there again down the road because there were a lot of things that we can take advantage of. But the, the bottom line is uh, we didn't, you know. Uh, we moved the ball well between the, between the 20s or the 30s and just weren't able to, you know, obviously put points up on the board. I think that's glaringly obvious. But like so, I said, I So mean, the psyche is a big deal. I mean, they got beat in Nanaimo. They got shellacked here at home. What do the coaches do to get these guys going, hey, we actually can beat these guys if we play the game that we know we can play? Uh, that's I, I that's the they, big deal I going. I, I know we're looking past they can beat this guys. weekend's game, but what happens in, in two weeks here? Jay, you're up. 
Yeah, I think absolutely that the players know that they can beat them if we get there in two weeks. I mean, fortunately, they're not focused on that. They're focused on the Rams because they're actually a pretty good football team. All right, let's go to the Rams right now. Uh, the first time you played them it was August the 6th, and the final score was 33-23 for the Sun. The Rams put a lot of points on the board. The second time you played them uh, was uh, was in Langley, and uh, it was uh, Sun 15, Rams 14, a whole lot closer than you would have liked. What kind of game are we going to see coming in this Sunday? Well, you know, I mean, I think for us, the key is that we have to be balanced, uh, as I've been preaching. So we've got to be able to run the ball. And, and they've probably got, uh, you know, where I would say we've probably got the best uh, front four in the league. They've probably got the overall best front seven. Um, so, it's, you know, it's going to be a challenge to, to move the ball on these guys uh, offensively. Defensively, um, you know, they've probably got the most dynamic player in the league right now in Nick Downey. So, uh, you know, it's going to be, I think, an exciting game. I mean, you'll see big plays on both sides, uh, hopefully both sides of the ball, but uh, it's not going to be a pushover. Like I said, these guys are a pretty good football team. They had, a, you know, the same, obviously, struggles with Nanaimo as we did, and they ended up splitting with Victoria. So I don't really know what happened in that one game. It was prior to my time, but uh, these aren't slouches for sure. Kamal, uh, win, lose, or draw, it'll probably be a much better game on Sunday than the one we watched last Sunday. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure I'm looking forward for it to being a very good uh, football game. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, I will tell you, 98% of the fans that were there, and they had a great crowd, by the way. Uh, we're, we all are looking to the next week's game. There's, like most people are thinking, this is a gimme. I know Jay won't say that, but uh, it's, uh, you know, we're looking. We're going to be there in Nanaimo in two weeks. Yeah, but you know what? I wouldn't mind coming out of it with a Sun 33, Rams 23 uh, kind of a score, Jay. It would certainly be an adequate tune-up uh, if that's where we're looking uh, before you head to the island. Oh, well, like I say, they're, they're are, they are a good football team. I don't think it's going to be a gimme. But, uh, you, know, I w- if, you know, again, if we move on p- past this weekend, I would rather have played a battle this Sunday to be ready for the following week than the gimme that Nanaimo is going to see. All right, gentlemen, I want to thank you. Kamal Abagush, keep serving that coffee and those breakfasts over there at the Grateful Fed. Jay uh, gets uh, ready, starts packing his bags, uh, and gets ready for the trip to the island. But first of all, it's the date with the land.